Hi everyone and welcome back to this tutorial. As you remember on our last lesson we start adding some texture to our building. On this video we'll finish editing these textures and we'll work on some light effects for the interiors. To start let us turn off the layers of the background so we can concentrate more on the in interior textures. Now what we're going to do is we're going to erase the, the concrete texture from these fish tanks so having our base drawing layer activated, we're going to use the one selection tool and select the spaces of the fish tanks. Now on the concrete layer, we're going to erase them. And going back to the base drawing layer, we're going to select this, this fish tank over here. And as we're cutting also through it, we're going to, to use our paint bucket tool to fill it with black color. We're going to use our paint bucket tool to fill it with the black color. And now as a second step, we're going to fill in the columns of the structure for that also having the base drawing layer activate and also with the one selection tool, we're going to select the spaces of the column. And now we're going to pick up a light gray color. And we're going to create a new layer. And name it columns. And also with the paint bucket tool, we're going to fill in this, the spaces. Okay, now the first light effect we're going to do is to give the doors uh, spaces a darker color. So we're going to use again the base drawing layer and the one selection tool to select the doors. Now we're activating our concrete texture layer. We are going to copy the selection and paste it again. And we're going to change the brightness level. So image brightness and now we're lowering the brightness value to around 50. And now we're changing its blending mode to multiply and we're lowering its opacity to around 40%. Now let's name this layer as doors. And now we're going to activate again the base room layer and we're going to select the whole interior rooms of the lower level. Even the doors. And we're going to repeat the same procedure. We'll go back to the concrete texture layer, copy selection, paste it, name this layer as interior rooms. And again, we're going to lower its brightness value. Also its opacity, well, its blending mode to multiply and its opacity. We're on 60. Okay. Then we will work on casting some shadows of the different elements and we will start with these two walls over here. So let's create a new layer, name it shadows. And using our lasso selection tool, we are going to cast some 45 degree shadows of these two walls. So we click on this corner, 45 degrees. The same for this wall. And now we're going to fill in the selection with the black color. And now we are going to change its blending mode from normal to overlay. And we're also going to adjust its opacity. Mm, 
to 50%. Now we're going to cast the shadows of of the beams of the roof and for that we're also going to use the lasso selection tool. We're going to create a new layer for these ones. Let's call it beams shadows. And we're going to do the same as we did for the walls. Now we're using the lasso selection tool to make the individual shadows of each beam. And we're not going to make uh, just one shadow to later copy and paste it several times. And this has its reason in the curve shape of the roof. And also in this because of the separation of the beams. So as the curve changes, this separation will also change and at some point this the shadows will start to get closer from one to another. One tip uh, for making this selection go on a 45 degree straight line is to make one first click at the beginning of the line and then press and hold the shift click, move and make a second click at the end of the line and this will snap the the selection tool to make a straight selection line. This will also work in a vertical and horizontal sense as well as using other tools like for example the brush tool. So as we have our sun on the left top corner of the image we're drawing these 45 degree shadows but feel free to explore change the position of the sun and try to draw in different shadows another thing i would like to recommend you is to always stay constant with the direction of the shadows of all the objects and also to make all the shadows according to the position of the light source this is very important to give more credibility to the image and to make it look more real in terms of the image composition the idea behind putting the sun on the left top corner of the image and projecting the shadows in that direction is to give the interior space a perception of a wide space opening towards a view to the water side. This will reinforce the intention of the shape of the roof of the building and finally it will make our final image look more dynamic. Now we just have to finish with the shadows of these last beams and as you can notice these last shadows are overlapping at this point but I still prefer to draw them one by one to be sure they they are the way they supposed to be so just a few more clicks and done so we we'll fill in the selection again with black color we're going to turn up the layer and we're going to select the areas where we know we don't want these shadows so we activate the base drawing layer and with the one selection tool we click out of the building as well as in the fish tank over here and uh, in the doors. We turn on again the beam shadow layer and we erase this new selection. Also we're going to change its blending mode to overlay and its opacity we're lowering down to a 30 25% let's say. And we're moving this beam shadows layer on top of the column layer. 
Finally, we will add a couple of images for the glass fish tanks. We will use this image right here to the three fish tanks in the interior room. So we select it, copy and paste it and paste it. We're using our the fish transform tool. We're going to adjust its size. Okay, and now we move the, rename this layer as fish tanks and move it beneath the concrete layer. We're going to change its fill percentage to 80. And now we will use this other image for the big fish tank. So select copy paste it now we have to adjust its size again Okay, and now we're going to erase the part of the image that it's outside. So we go to the base drawing layer, we select the fish tank, and we use this select inverse option. As well, we have to erase this part of the shadow. So we go to the shadow, to the base drawing layer, select the fish tank, now the shadows layer, and erase the shadow. Okay. And let's name this big fish tank layer as big fish tank. That's easy. And we lower also its fill percentage to 80. Okay, now we can turn again on all the background layers to see how our image is looking. On our next video, we'll continue adding some light effects to the interior rooms and we will start adding some interior and furniture. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for our next lesson.